Hi, my name is Jerry Bartles and I'm a Civil Technical Specialist with Autodesk. The purpose of today's presentation is to see how to leverage map books within Civil 3D to automate the process of creating your cross-section sheets. So, let's begin. I've got a project here. It's got a long corridor. A number of sections have already been created, as well as I've already computed materials for cuts and fills. So when I'm finished, I'm going to need to create cross-section sheets that will accommodate around 90-plus cross-sections themselves or section views. So to do this, I can automate the process in four simple steps. The first one is I need to make a template that will be used as the basis to create my cross-section sheets. So we'll create this new template by just building a drawing using the standard defaults. And when that drawing is open, we'll create a template from which to work. What I'm going to do is select the one of the default sheets that ships with the software, and we'll do maybe something that is just plan only here. Scale is going to be irrelevant because we'll set that through the map books process later. So what we're primarily looking for here is just sheet size. So we've created our new layout. And we're going to go ahead, let's come in and modify that a little bit. I'm not going to need the north arrow, so we'll erase that. But what I will like to do is take the viewport that has been created automatically for us and make sure that it's got a consistent um, reproducible size. In this case, by default, it was 20.96. Let's go ahead and set that to an even 21 and the width to maybe an even 28. This will be the size of the viewport that we will specify in map books when we build our frame in Civil 3D that will control how many section views will be placed on each sheet. So with that done, just a couple other um, maintenance uh, items here. We'll go ahead in map books, we'll bring up the map task pane. I'm going to go to map books and we will go to tools and this is where I will identify the placeholder such that map books will know to use this viewport to correspond with the frame that we'll set up in Civil 3D. I need only select main viewport, select the placeholder, touch my viewport, we'll say close and I'm ready to go. Just a couple of other cleanup items here very quickly. We'll come into our layout itself and let's modify it such that it's going to use maybe our company color table. I'd like to display plot styles and that should work for us quite nicely. Maybe one other thing that we'll do is I'll establish the name at the bottom. This will be cross-section sheet so we'll just say um, maybe X X S E S E C T or something like that for the names. Okay, so that should work for us all right. We'll save the drawing and we'll be ready to go. So we'll save this as a template. I'm going to just throw it on my desktop for right now. And this will be my cross section template for a 24 by 36 inch sheet. With that saved, we'll go ahead and close it. Now, the, the good thing is, once we've done that, we don't really need to do it again. It's something that we can use forever. Step two, we need to define a frame now within Civil 3D that will serve the purpose to define that 28 by 21 inch viewport that we just created in our template. And that's controlled by a page setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a page setup within Civil 3D that matches that same size. So we'll come into Page Setup Manager, we'll build a new one. And this will be my uh, cross-section setup. And I'll define a uh, plotter for it at this point. We don't have anything connected, so we'll just do it with DWF. And this is why we, we need to do something custom, because odds are there isn't a 28 by 21 inch sheet. So we'll build a custom paper size to accommodate that. So our media boundary will be a width of 28 and a height of 21. And I'm not going to need any space around the outside edge. We'll print right up to the edge of the viewport, so we'll set them all to zero. Paper size, what we'll name this will be for uh, cross-section viewports. 28 by 21. And we'll finish. We'll go ahead and save that. And we'll select or take a look at that size up here. Here's our 28 by 21. And uh, we should be good to go. So we'll say OK. Our frame or our page setup has been constructed. We'll come back to model space. 
Now, step two has been completed. Once that's been done, we don't have to do that a second time. We can continue to reuse that. We can make that part of our drawing template so that will always be available for us. Let's start to break out our section views. We'll come down, we'll create multiple views. And this is where we will establish or define the size here in the group plot style. We'll start by saying plot by page. And then we'll go ahead and edit that. And the area that we're going to use, instead of being the basic one here, we'll go ahead and edit that. And we will use the cross-section layout or setup that we created. Once again, I don't need any margins around the outside. And as I highlight these, Civil 3D very conveniently puts some orange arrows to show me what values I'm adjusting. In this case, we're going to print right to the edge of the frame. That's all we'll need. So that, uh, that's fine. The other thing that we will do, uh, we won't have any gap between the pages. Array, we're going to start to print these by column, lower left. The defaults are going to be good, one inch uh, between them. We'll see how that looks. The great part is it remains dynamic. If I don't like the way it's originally laid out, we can tweak the style, and it will be updated from there. So that looks good. The only other thing that I may do, I'm going to come down to my section value or my section views here and because I've done materials I'm going to go ahead and add that to the lower left of each section so we'll tell it where to place that table and once again as we add this we see the icon uh, updating for us automatically so we'll set the value such that the section will be put in the immediate, immediate lower left hand corner of each section so we'll create the views I'll just pick a point down here in space We'll let Civil 3D chug for a minute because it's trying to figure out what is going to be the best representation of these cross sections on these, uh, these sheets. It's determining how many sheets are going to be necessary and how to organize those cross sections on the sheets. So we'll go ahead and let it bring that up and we see that what we're left with on the screen here is a number of sheets. Running through an auto save. Let's back up. I've got uh, seven sheets. It's done a nice job with placement. Maybe if we tighten up the vertical on them a little bit, I can get it a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to select the section. We'll come up using our context menus in the ribbons. And we're going to change the uh, group properties here. And we'll edit the group plot style such that maybe the distance between the rows will set that to 0.5. We'll say OK. And I'll let it uh, reprocess those. Once again, I see the orange arrow is immediately identifying that. And... I like the way that that's broken out a little bit better on the screen, so we've got six sheets. Let's complete the process by going into Map Books now and actually breaking out the layouts. So I'm going to go to Tools. I'm sorry, we'll go to New. We'll create a new Map Book. I'll get a dialog on the screen, and I just fill it out for what I'm looking for. So my Map Book name, this will be uh, Cross Sections. The Sheet Template we will grab off of our desktop. So the desktop one that we created was our cross-section template. As far as our tiling scheme, uh, layout, we had the cross-section layout. I don't need any additional blocks, and the scale factor will match what we're currently using in Civil for 40 scale. Tiling, I would like to tell it to start constructing sheets at the upper left-hand corner here. I'd like maybe... Um, say nine sheets, one row of sheets, and I don't need any overlap. We could also integrate this into a sheet set, but right now I'm not going to worry about that. We'll just go ahead and let it break out the tiles. Now it's currently associated with a map book. I'm going to say no, we don't need the sheet set. And we see that it's broken out the sheets to match the same formation that was already created. I've got some additional ones on the end. The great thing about that is it's dynamic. We change the style. We've already got sheets that have been set up that we can use. We look at the layouts themselves. I'll select one layout here. It'll immediately bring up our cross-section sheet. And what we should see is on the layout itself, the section's nicely spaced or ready for printing. All right, so we'll come up and look. And here is an example of my cross-section, my, uh, my cuts, my fills, and we're ready to go. So in less than 10 minutes, leveraging map books within Civil 3D, we were able to completely automate the process of generating our cross-section sheets. Once again, my name is Jerry Bartle, Civil Technical Specialist with Autodesk, and this concludes today's presentation.